Hello viewers. I'm going to do a green synthetic quartz emerald cut today. This is the piece I've got. It's a pretty nice material. This is the diagram I'm using. And I'm going to use uh, regular brown faceting wax to hot dop the stone. I'm using a different uh, machine today. I'm using an Ultratech faceting machine. This is a V2 model. Here's your protractor where you set your angle. And your, your cheat adjustment for your fine radial micro adjusting. Your index gear. I want to mention something when since I'm dopping with this this ultra tech key dop my stone will follow the diagram it could sit it's going to be like that it's I'm not going to cut it like this I'm taking advantage of the rectangular shape so let's say our 96 is down here like this 48 up here I don't want to put my dop stick like this because this cut, slanted part of the dop stick, signifies 96. Right. So this has to be oriented like that. That's how you want your dop stick to be on your stone if you're working on a rectangular piece. You you don't want it to be dopped like that, or any, it could be this way, but not like this or this. It's got to be, be like that as close as you can get it to take advantage of the rectangular piece of rough. Here the stone is properly dopped, and the dop stick is oriented correctly for, for cutting this piece of rough. Okay, I'm set at 96 on my index setting. I've inserted the gemstone on the dock, and uh, I see right away that I wasn't quite accurate with my centering of the stone. The stone is a little bit, a little bit crooked there. I'd like that to be straight. I'll be giving up some material, even though this is not valuable, I'd still like to uh, do it the right way. So what I'm going to do is heat the gemstone while it's dopped and I can straighten this stone. Heat the wax and straighten the stone right here. Okay. I've heated the gemstone and moved it with just a little twist and now it's uh, good enough now. I'm happy with the way it is. Alright, I have my 
angle at 90 degrees. My indicator depth of cut gauge is set at 90 and 0. Actually, just 0, I mean to say. I'm ready to lower the uh, stone down. And I'll begin fasting. Okay, I've uh, cut the 96 and the 48 indexes, both of these sides, to equal depths. So I measured my stone and I come out to, let me see here, I'll redo it. I come out to 13.2 millimeters. Now, this uh, length to width ratio on this gemstone to be correct is a 1.25 so that means what I'll do is uh, I've got the 13.2 I'll call that the height I have to cut the width at 16.5 and you divide those and you get the 1.25 length to width ratio. So that means the length of the stone has to be 16.5. So I've got to cut a little off of this stone. It's too long to be properly in proportion. I want to put this in a setting so I want it to be to the right proportion. So I've got to change to 72 and 24 and cut off both of these equally till I reach 16.5. Cutting first of the long pavilion facets, I'm using a 180 grit lap and uh, you can see here that I'm cutting at 43 degrees. Finished all cut all cutting of the uh, pavilion facets with the uh, very coarse 180 grit lap. Cutting the corner facets and I'm using the 600 lap. These are easy to overcut so you've got to be careful. Here I've finally finished all the facets with the 600 lap. It's 
So I'm going to go on to the 3000 pre-polish next. I'm doing the final polishing. This is using a cerium oxide lap. I finished polishing the gemstone. There are a lot of bubble inclusions in this, and they uh, come to the surface too, so they're showing up on the surface as little flaws. But that's what you get with synthetic material and natural. You can have flaws in all of it. Inclusions, I should say. Here, the transfer dopping is in progress. And uh, for this side of the stone, I used epoxy glue. And that'll dry overnight, and tomorrow I can start cutting the crown. I like the feature here of this thumb screw that locks this sliding block into place. It can't move back and forth. So Ultratech did a good thing by providing this locking screw there. That's something I didn't have with the, uh, the Facitron dopping a transfer jig. It was free to slide back and forth at any time. You couldn't lock it. Now I can move uh, this piece and uh, it, nothing's going to move as long as this screw is locked down. Okay, I'm ready to start fastening the crown. These V-Dops, which I used on this piece of rough, does not have the slashed end, the 45 degree cut, so it's not keyed. All the V-Dops are not keyed on the Ultratech machines. So, being this has got a nice flat side, I can put it in the machine, set my machine's angle at 90 degrees, put my machine right down here, make contact with a flat lap, a, a smooth lap, the smoothest you can. This is just a backing lap, a master lap. When your stone touches, make sure it's good and flat. Make sure it, you're in the 96 index setting. And then you tighten your thumb screw. Double check, look that it's completely flat. And you're good to go. Cutting the crown now. Cut the first four cuts, facet cuts. Now I've got the uh, crown facets all roughed in. And this is using a 360 lap. So I'll go back to the, up to the 600 and uh, recut everything with the 600. The cutting with the 600 lap is finished. Next, I'll use a 3000 pre-polished disc and 
cut all the facets. And once that's done, I can polish with uh, cerium oxide. Cutting the crown now. is finished and I'll uh, take it off the dop stick. Hey, here's a finished gemstone.